Hello friends, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. So, it is February and I am doing Christina Warner's capsule paper crafting challenge. So I only have a certain set of supplies to use. If you're interested in seeing what those supplies are, my last video goes through all of that. And I'll try and link it at the end as well. Here are just some card sketches and so I was pointing to the one I was going to use and I apologize I have three videos filmed edited completely ready to go other than I haven't voiced them over and that's because I got a sinus infection so I honestly just haven't been interested in talking <laughs> so I'm trying to voice these over get them up so I'll post them all pretty close together just so that, because I feel bad, I should have posted them last week, but I was, I was just not feeling it, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys get sinus infections, but they are just not my favorite thing in the world. So I am embossing this background stamp that I have, and it, I was able to stamp it out pretty well, but there was a few little spots that didn't fully connect, but I decided, you know what, it's good enough. So I heat embossed that with some white embossing powder and then my plan had been to paint, to put the painter's tape down, paint in the squares and then peel that tape off and it just be kind of one layer. The issue I ran into was it definitely seeped under that tape. That tape with the ridges of the embossed and the embossed stamp, it, it just allowed a lot of water to flow under those pieces of tape. So I ended up cutting them, cutting those pieces down. What I really should have done is just blocked off four bigger sections and cut cut those sections down later because I probably could have made two cards out of this that way. Another thing I could have done is masked it, painted it, and then embossed over top of that. The issue is that I like that you get some like pulling of color around the images. I think that just looks really cool. So that's why I embossed first and then painted. But definitely a way you could do this where it actually would work. <laughs> I think the end card turned out really awesome, and I love that I was able to add dimension to those little squares. But, you know. So I've, I've been trying to use more card layout, like, little diagrams, because sometimes I can't think of what to do with the end card card like I really love making everything but then pulling it all together as a card I feel like for me is a weakness or something I'm not overly good at so that's why I've been lately having these card sketches that I'm going off of building from there having a direction I'm going has seemed to been a positive thing so I'm trying to balance out between the fun of creating as well as the enjoyment of actually having made something pretty <laughs> because it's I have some really pretty backgrounds and things that I've made that I haven't put on a card because I, I'm just so worried I'm gonna ruin it by whatever I do next so I'm trying not to be like that anymore and I've been enjoying actually creating stuff that looks really nice, planning it out and having an end execution goal in mind. So here I, I've just taken three colors of some watercolor that I have and these are the Spectrum Noir glitter paint, uh, glitter watercolor. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, and I don't feel like walking downstairs to check. But 
if you check my last video, you can see. So it's just three colors of red, pink, and I, I don't know, would you call that a coral color that I have? I took some and put that on my little piece of white plastic that I'm using as a palette because I bought a palette a, like a year ago. It was this really cool, fancy palette, and I was super excited to use it, and it was going to be awesome, and I can't find it. I know it's in my house somewhere, but I honestly have no idea where it is at all, and I've probably cleaned and organized every single part of my house since then, but... The thing has not shown up. I, I honestly, it's crazy to me. And I refuse to spend another $10 on something that I have somewhere in this house. So, anyway. So, I just have this piece of plastic, which works almost as well. Anyway, moving on. I painted the backgrounds and tried to do use two colors for each background. And I tried to switch up which colors I was using together so I could kind of get an ombre effect going on there. Then, after those are completely dry, I'm going in usually with the third color I didn't use in that section and adding some details. You will have seen for that really dark part in the bottom left corner, I actually used water instead of the third color so that I could pull that up. So I could pull up some of the color and allow a little bit more variation. The other parts I'm adding some color into. So like above, I'm adding that, oh, I, it depends on what you put it next to. Sometimes it looks like on that top mustard yellow and other times like on the bottom right it looks corally. So it just depends. Um, in the bottle it looks very corally so that's why I used it. Christina Warner went through this whole process of creating a like color chart and making it all fancy and beautiful and creating all these wonderful colors and showing what she could do, you know, to herself. But she did share it with everybody else. And that looked amazing. I have made color charts before and I inevitably make at least one, but usually like three mistakes and I'm having to write all around it. This is really is, should be here and this should be there. And it makes me too upset. Plus those color charts take forever. So I'm just winging it because that's just kind of, kind of the person I am. <laughs> anyway, so I have chopped out those sections. You saw what I was talking about earlier where some of the water pulled under. So I went ahead, grabbed my paper trimmer chopped chopped those up and now I have four little boxes you can see there I spent a little while trying different different ways to put them together I ended up doing it exactly the same way as I had painted it out but I figured hey what's the harm in trying something different seeing if I can find a better better way but I felt like it on the very harsh white was a mistake. I thought there needed to be something on the background, not a lot, but something to break up that white. So I took this stencil, and it looks like a little tufting, and picked out either the lightest or the second to lightest gray that I had. And just very lightly ink blended over the top of that. I thought it turned out really cute, although by the time that I put everything on the card, you actually 
can't see it all that much, so you don't really know it's tufting. It just is kind of a pattern on the background. So here I'm trying again, just making sure that that's the way that I wanted it. The one issue I had was I felt like that bottom right hand little cell was just a little bit too thin. I should have made it a little bit larger, but I make up for that by putting the sentiment under that to give it a little bit more visual weight. So I, I don't think giving up <laughs> is the right, the right answer if you can find a way to work around something. So here is the sentiment and I picked a very small thin one. I had planned to put it over the top but then once I saw the card laid out I knew if I did just a really small sentiment in a strip I could add that to the card give that a little that area I felt like was lacking a little bit more visual weight and polish out the card so that's what I ended up doing I did not include any embellishments in my capsule collection so there's no embellishments on my cart so I ended up not putting any embellishments on this but I think adding some little rhinestones would have really been a great way to pump this card up to the next level <laughs> give it a little bit of a kick here I had thought to cut the thank you the strip of it to match the end of that pink box that is below but I actually really liked how it looked going off the card off the card because it it kind of feels like there's more to the story it, it pulls your eye along the card and I liked that it it goes off the card as if continuing on that might be a little intense for a simple card might just be <laughs> a little bit dramatic but I really just I thought that leaving that strip all the way to the end of the card added something so I did that and that's about the end of the card. I snip that off, add it to a card base, and bing, bam, boom, we're done. So I'm going to show you a few pictures of the card at the end. Here is the end. <laughs> and stay tuned because I have another couple videos coming up probably in the next couple of days as well as I have my vlog for the first week is included in one of those videos. And I'll tell you how the challenge has been going. So if you're interested in those, definitely subscribe so you don't miss them. Have an absolutely wonderful day. I hope you're crafting a lot. Here are some other videos you might be interested so you can take a look and just have an awesome, amazing, wonderful, crazy day. Bye, guys.